much for coming out this morning. Um, everyone was briefed on today's exciting news yesterday in any of our conversations. We just wanted to remind everyone that everything is under embargo until 10.15 a.m., so no articles and no social media posts until that lifts at 10.15 a.m., please. And I'm just going to hand it over to Ryan to share more about this exciting news. Happy summer, everyone. It's kind of starting. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is a, a big shift in the model of how consumption of media has been done. Um, and I just want to start by saying thank you to Jim Olson, who has spearheaded this with the team, um, with Caroline, and, and John and Chris and the, the, our crew here because they have been working on this and we've been working on this together for well over a year. And to give you an idea, the complexities of this is, and the work that's been put in, um, has been far more intensive than the All-Star Game. Um, it, it wasn't um, straightforward. There's a reason why organizations haven't done this, and I'm just super proud of the work that everyone's done. And so um, with that, uh, I talked about it being a model shift. Um, we're standing up a production company. Um, when we took over the, the Jazz, SEG, the parent company of the Jazz, kind of uh, had two, two components. Number one was um, sports and entertainment, and the second was real estate with the ownership of the arena. And we're, we're basically building out a third leg of that stool, which is um, media. And um, we're leaning into this. Um, I think where sports is going and where um, the world's going and consumption, um, you know, we saw this from the very beginning. I come from the experience world and we weren't providing the best experience for our fans by the way the model was set up. We were, I think, hitting 39% of jazz fans in the state of Utah. Um, and to be able to go to 100% of our fan base in the state, um, as well as a, a new digital offering. And then um, an exciting part is going outside of our state and hitting a whole new audience that um, we have fans in and we have a chance to grow the brand there. So you know, we, we can anticipate as, as much of a four to six X increase in eyeballs on this team and the organization, which um, I think is, is, is a dream for us. There's a lot of people that work really hard to put, you know, the brand together, the content, the, the players, um, the coaches, the front office, and to be able to roll that out at a broader scale is, is pretty exciting. And so there's a little bit of an overview. I'm happy to answer anything. So. So, I mean, it's no one's fault. It's just, it's a business model. It's a business model that's been in place for 15 years. And when you change business models, um, it, it's hard. It takes a lot of lead time. And um, my number one thing was just everywhere I would go personally. I mean, I grew up watching KJAZ. Um, it seems like we went forward one way from a revenue standpoint and a simplicity standpoint, but we went backwards from an experience standpoint. And so... The number one thing is just, just ubiquitous access to this experience um, and then being the flagship team here in the state of Utah, um, we want everyone to be able to see it. And so that's it's pretty simple. Do you know what kind of price point you're going to have for the subscription-based package? You know, we don't know that yet. I mean. Uh, that's something that we're looking at. There's a lot that goes into that, specifically around the long-term direction of the NBA. Um, and then there's a little bit of precedent that's been established. Um, so you need to kind of look at short-term access and the value prop that we're offering through that, whether it's content, whether it's swag, whether it's something that people get. And then as you expand that out, what does it look like five years down the road? And, and we're working very closely with the NBA on that. Um, but the bottom line is even that experience, what we want to do is create one experience where you go to utahjazz.com or the app, 
and you can just watch games right there. You're not going somewhere else. It's just right there. And, um, you know, there's, there's national media deals where there will be restriction on national televised games. But outside of that, I think that um, people, it should be pretty simple on where to go and how to watch games. Um, I also think with, with the new KJAZ deal, um, a lot of those auxiliary platforms will have, you know, access to games as well. And so if, if you can't access the games, I think at this point it's probably on you. Uh, so uh, we're, we're in a good spot. We talked about uh, just how difficult it is to build a streaming service, you know, cost-wise, effort-wise. Are you trying to do this in-house? Are you working with someone to make it happen? Uh, how are you implementing it? Yeah, I don't think the streaming service is difficult to create. I mean, geez, with the amount of content and organizations are standing this up, that's that's not the challenge. The challenge has always been, and you and I have talked about this at length, Andy, like it's it's been the channel conflict. It's been, um, you know, the old model to a new model. And now that we're in this spot and we're the only team in the league that's truly in this spot where, where we're rolling forward, we're going to be able to um, – pick a partner, do it ourselves, work with the league, do a hybrid model. Um, or and, and there's a lot of new ways to bring in new technology there. And where we start is not where we end up, just like with any technology. Like we're going to start, we're going to launch, and then we're just going to keep iterating and iterating and iterating on on how to make that, that service better. And we're going to learn a lot together. Um, the good news is it will be there in the fall. Speaking of that process of, you know, how long do you expect or have you signed this deal for in terms of, yeah, I mean, one of the things we didn't, I mean, it's, it's not a, a super long-term deal, but with the flexibility, it's probably more, much more of a partnership than a, than a deal. You know, I think we've been very much in the deal mode where you're locked into a deal. And I think in our world, like, we're partners. Like, I think that that's, that's important with KJAZ. And if we're good partners, it'll keep going. If we're not good partners with each other, it won't. And I think that's, that's awesome for both sides, and that's how it truly should be, as opposed to most of the old model deals where you get to the end and it's completely lopsided one way or another, and that's why I think that we're in this position with, with television because you know the models have changed, people have cut cords, and, and these things were signed at a time where the world wasn't like this. And so with a partnership, I think we actually have a chance to, to bob and weave and adjust with where the world's going. No one knows where it's going to be, but I look at how we're set up. I look at our opportunity to control the content all the way through. And if we think about the production company, we, we be, because we produced our games, we have a chance to do this. We have award-winning production, um, but we never really stood it and separated it out. It's like, hey, this is going to be a core competency of what we do. And historically, what we've done is almost just kind of thrown the feed over and said, okay, whatever the experience for the fans is, is what it is, and that's out of our control. What we're doing now is we're actually curating that all the way to the end. And so we are going to curate that fan experience at every level and almost start with the fan and back our way to how we make the business model work. No one has. Yeah, I think as an organization, <laughs> this is this has been just like top three things since since we I mean since since I got here, um, and it's something that I hear about every single day wherever I go, and it's just like I know I know I know there's a better experience out there we know, and so to have this underway is is pretty big, and I think it's exciting. I think now we're looking forward and we're saying okay. What's the art of the possible here? Like, how do we think about, you know, things? We've got a docu-series that's coming out for our 50th anniversary. Super exciting. Um, well, do you think about that in the production company? Well, the draft, what can we be doing? There, there's a lot more that we can do. And, you know, with Jay-Z and, and, and DA and Will, um, just the, the openness to help has been a big part of why we're going to be able to do some really cool things.
and that's that's not everywhere in the league. How quickly do you expect you can get you know your first broadcast off the ground? Is it like the draft? Is it summer league? Yeah, we've got a draft. Uh, do we have something with the draft coming? Um, summer league will be there. I mean, this is like part of this is nimbleness, right? We want to be able to move and be able to to go and um, it, like I said, it's gonna be what, it's gonna be part of what we do. Ryan, we see the Suns, Golden Knights doing something very similar. Now the Jazz. Is this something that you foresee other sports leagues doing? Yeah, I think I think everyone's trying to solve it in their own way, and they're all coming from a different position. You know, I think um, you know with the Suns and still being under contract, that's a hard one. Um, the Golden Knights are are doing the best they can with the situation that they're in. Um, you know, we're I think we all have PhDs on on the, the broadcast world at this point and where every sports team's at. Um, but I, I think we're, we're doing something from a production standpoint that's, that's truly unique. And I think that as that plays out, people will see, people will see that. Um, and, you know, we're coming, I think, from, from a different point because we, we truly are independent and we're doing everything in house, and we're rolling everything in house, and so um, I think that gives us a lot of opportunity to see something coming down the road and, and jump on it. So the business stuff aside, what's the message to the fan at, at all corners of, of Utah? I, I think it's it's pretty simple. Like we don't need to talk about access to games anymore. It's, it's there. How frustrating was the situation when you? I mean, it's not, it wasn't like, I think everyone's kind of in that spot. It was just kind of the, lay, the business model. Um, the fr most frustrating part was last year when we lost one of the major carriers a week before. I mean, we couldn't do anything. And that's, that's a direct representation of our brand. But at the same time, we had no control over that. That was just like we were being acted upon. That will never happen again. How big do you envision SEG Media being from like a content creation point of view? I mean, like, are, how how much content are you creating? What kinds of content? I mean, like, how where do you see this thing going? Here? Yeah, I think it, it provides us the ability to organizationally structure different uh, in a different way. Um, and I think you know, I think every player right now, if you if you actually think about like the internal pressures they have as being a player or a brand and the amount of content that they're trying to put out there, I think it actually aligns with, with where the world's going. And, um, and I think there's a lot of ways to, 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 to help our players, and our players um, kind of help build it all together. Um, and then I believe it expands from not only basketball to the future of SEG and where we want to go um, with additional sports and um, being a premier sports platform in the state of Utah. Can we talk about additional sports while we're, while we're here? I, Andy, it doesn't matter what I say. You'll probably ask about it anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, No, no, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I, I mean, obviously, uh, let me ask you guys, since the Sports Chat podcast, uh, you said you were, you were ready, right? Like, that was a big message. Has anything developed since then uh, that means an NHL team is closer to you? No, I mean, I'm in close communication with, with Gary um, Batman and they they know our intent um, timings everything and I'm not saying that's gonna be a I mean it could be months it could be years but um, I think that there's a lot of mutual respect um, and I think it's a perfect fit for everything that we want to go do and we're aligned um, but we want to do it right as well and I think if you look at like the Vegas Knights for example um, it's pretty hard to to argue, argue that what the NHL has done with expansion or new teams is, has been pretty incredible to have that kind of a run. So um, we just want to partner with the league and, and help them out as much as we can in whatever form that is, and they know that. And we're in constant communication, and um, the time will be right when it is. Would it require an existing arena? Like, would you have to have it built? <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, we I was just on the phone with the – Luke Robitaille from the from the Kings and there's um, you know we can 
we can make do, but if you actually just back up around the experience, there's a, probably a better experience than that. <laughs> and I think that's, that's probably part of the consideration and, and how to go through that. But, um, you know, we've got the frozen fury coming up. Um, and we hope everyone shows up for that. And I think, I think it's, um, it's exciting. I'll just ask you point blank because I think you don't care, but a potential new arena downtown versus Bluffdale versus. Yeah, we're getting a little over our skis there. Let's, let's focus on the first step. Uh, uh, but you know, the, the good news in Utah is I think there's a lot of optionality, um, and you know, our fan base is growing everywhere. So, um, I, I think, I think we, we try to focus on getting the franchise first and then figuring out what the best options are. Um, but I think it, uh, it's all positive if, if we can do that. And I think that we'll be just as successful in Utah as Vegas has been or Seattle's been. I think that's pretty clear. What's that? The range, did it change from when it was gay bad before? As far as coverage, Idaho, Montana? Yeah, so, so, so historically we've signed one deal, and then they've handled all the distribution. And I think with this new media company, one of the things we're doing is there will be multiple deals targeting different audiences, like a direct-to-consumer deal, the KJAZ deal. Um, and then we're starting to, to really focus, as, as mentioned, um, outside of the state. And, you know, other ticket giveaways and stuff like that, it's amazing to me how many people will hit me from Idaho or Wyoming and say, hey, we want to come down. And so I actually, I actually think that if you look at where our reach is, we're, we're, we're reality closer to some of those states than we are southern Utah. And I think we forget about that sometimes. And so we, we have not taken advantage as, as probably as well as we could because of the, the old model prohibited some of that. And I think the ability to expand that out, I think, is also very exciting. Final questions? Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right.